Hey, what's happening guys? Got something interesting for us to play with today. If you're not into radios, I understand if you want to skip this video, but it is very electronics related. It's this guy right here. This is the RTL SDR.com. This SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. And what this little device here is, it's a USB dongle, plugs into your PC, and with a bit of software, it allows your PC to become a very powerful high frequency, which some folks call shortwave, as long as V as well as VHF and UHF receiver. Very cool, very low cost. This is available for about $20 from Amazon. And I'll post the link down below. So as you can see here, this model is called the R820 T2. And it's got a TCX, so that is a temperature controlled crystal oscillator. And it also includes the HF bands. I don't know how well it's going to do the HF bands because that is largely dependent on the length of your antenna. So let's zoom out here a little bit. Because not only do you get the dongle, you get an antenna. Now in its shortened position here, less than a foot long. This is a mag mount antenna. This screws on here and you can adjust this length. A couple of things that you want to keep in mind when doing this though. All right, the first thing is these mag mount bases I've read online and mine turned out to be the case may have a broken ground lead from the factory. So you definitely want to check to make sure that your magnet on the bottom connects electrically to the outer part of this SMA connector, which is the grounded part. So I've fixed it and you can see that that works. Secondly, you're going to need a ground plane. These were made to put on a car. But for our purposes today, we're going to use this nice stainless steel disc here. Pop that on there like that. And then once again, we're going to check to make sure that we have a good ground connection. Can you see that? We don't. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Okay, when I had to take this apart to fix it, I had to remove the... Uh, copper foil that was on the bottom and the magnet wasn't quite making contact so I just put a new layer of copper tape down just this stuff quarter inch wide copper tape really cheap stuff good to have in your kit and now oh just poke myself with my very sharp probe master probes now if we test we have a good and thorough ground. So, our hardware is pretty much ready to go. The other thing is, this is a telescoping antenna. You're gonna wanna match this to um, one half the wavelength for a dipole. But we'll get into that in a few minutes. Let's look at the software next. All right, so for the software, which is free, you're just gonna go to www.rtl-sdr.com and I'll link that down below so you don't have to worry about it. And when you get there, click on the quick start guide and come on down here and we'll come to the section called SDR. Whoops. Why does it keep doing that? SDR setup guide, blah, blah, blah. And it'll tell you down, we're going to come down here to airspy.com. And that's where we're going to get our software. All right, so airspy.com. We're going to click on download. Core tools, Windows SDR software package. Download it. And that's about it. Now, if we go to the quick start guide here, give you a little information on how it works, but we'll get into that. One thing to be aware of, you are gonna have to have the .NET framework installed. 
So if you don't have the .NET framework installed, could be a little problem there. Now, back over here, this is back to the RTL SDR page. We're going to extract the SDR sharp to a folder and double click the install RTL SDR bat. So let's get there. Okay, so we're there. I'm going to run it as administrator. And it says it's downloading the driver from host osmocom.com. Downloading Zadig, which is the driver we need. Okay, so that's done. That only took a few seconds. Our next step is what? Plug in the dongle. All right, we will do that next. Okay, so I plugged in the dongle and it says the software was not successfully installed, which is fine. Now we need to go back to the z folder where we unzip the SDR Spice or the SDR Sharp software and find zdig.exe. So that's our next stop. Okay, we're going to double click the zdig. It says list all devices okay that is not the device we want we want bulk in interface zero and we said make sure it has the win usb driver listed here and install the driver so we are installing the driver would i like to install this well sure Sounds like a fun plan to install it. I know this seems like there's a lot going on here, but I don't think it's too bad if we just follow along. It's been going for about three minutes, so it's taking its uh, good old time. But it does keep coming up with some interesting messages here. Every few seconds, they switch to something else. It does say that it has a five-minute timeout, though, so... How was your day? Oh, well, my day would be great if this works. Well, that certainly isn't good. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I guess we'll find out in 15 seconds. Well, it turns out all I needed to do was restart everything, and it worked just fine. So anyway, we're going to give this a try, and the first thing I'm going to do is try a local FM station, which will probably be picked up with this, but we're going to do a dipole at 103.5. So in inches, we're looking at um, 2 feet 3.1 inches, so 27 inches. And I'm just going to use my tape measure here and set this to 27 inches. And next we're going to go over to the computer and fire up the software. Okay, so here's the software running. And over here on the left side of the screen is our control panel. We want to make sure that we're choosing RTL SDR USB. Now over here we have our modes. Um, let me get pencil again here. This is narrowband FM, AM, lower sideband, upper sideband wideband FM, which is what broadcast is, dual sideband, continuous wave, which is Morse code, and raw. So I'm going to make sure that the uh, volume's all the way down so I don't play any 
copyrighted material and the local station is 103.5 megahertz and we'll hit start now what you can see here is the display and I know this probably seems confusing so I'm going to explain it to you okay this area here well never mind let me try it again <laughs> this area here is your spectrum analyzer display so what we're seeing here is the spectrum of frequencies from 102.250 up to a little bit beyond 103.7 and you see we have a spike here then we come down here to this lower area right here this is called our waterfall display this axis well, I keep drawing my arrow the wrong way is time this axis is intensity of the signal okay now we have zoom we have contrast we have range we have offset so we can adjust things here see how our frequency display works there the way we adjust these things we can get see how we're zoomed right in and then we can zoom out and if we want to hear this particular signal all we have to do is click on it let's see I'm going to turn it up for just a second there you heard it I don't want a copyright strike now we can scroll through here and look for other signals now you see how we see a signal right here there's not much to it and if we click there it'll bring it out so we can go through all sorts of things local repeaters uh, everything we can even go up to two you know into the gigahertz so there's 2.5 2.4 gigahertz and it tells you here what the different bands are and we can also go down lower lower let's go to like 28 megahertz see what we're seeing here 28 megahertz is the CB band and there's nothing much going on there now you see we have the 10 centimeter ham band Now there's something here which is probably a digital signal. You guys hear that? That's probably packet radio. And you can scroll all the way through all of the different bands until you find a signal that you want to listen to. And it, as you scroll up through here, it'll tell you what the different bands are. Another signal, but not much going on there. Probably digital. You can get police and fire, aircraft, just about anything you can imagine. If you put your antenna outside and Put it up pretty high you can probably pick up a lot of stations that's another digital signal so that is working pretty good and one of the things you'll notice if we come back here where was that one signal at where was it at right down here So there's our digital signal. And it's at 49.997 megahertz. And if we come over here to our modes, it automatically switches for us and tells us we're listening in the upper 
sideband. We're going to be getting into a lot more interesting stuff here pretty soon with radios, but this is just the beginning. Just something to uh, something to whet your appetite and show you how easy it is to get started with something like this. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. And uh, this thing was purchased with my own money. There's no sponsorship involved here. Hate that I have to keep saying stuff like that, but that's what I guess some people want to hear. Anyway, I'm out. Peace.